Hello everybody and welcome to this webinar, Trading Psychology, the key to maximizing your market returns with myself, Steve Ward, uh, also on, here on behalf of, uh, of Mark Walton. And uh, Mark's going to do a very brief intro before we get into the webinar itself. So just hand it over to Mark. Hi guys, uh, good evening, good morning, good afternoon from wherever you are in the world. This is Mark from ForexMentorPro.com. Uh, thanks very much to Steve for doing this webinar. I know that we have people from literally from all over the world. We've got members in Alaska all the way down to Zaire. So some of you, it could even be the middle of the night. Uh, the benefit of being here to the live event is at the end of this event, Steve will be holding a Q&A. So if you've got any specific questions, he will talk to you about it. I just basically want to say, I mean, I started trading from home 10 years ago, and I was talking to Steve a little bit earlier about this. I think that retail traders, people sat at home with nobody watching over them, have such a difficult time learning how to trade successfully. And it's not to do with technical analysis. It's not to do with fundamental analysis. To me, it all comes down to the brain and the stupid, ridiculous things that we do. And I personally struggled for three years as a trader. And in the end, I almost got to the point of throwing the towel in. But I was fortunate enough I had the time and the money. And I took a little bit of a pause and a break away. And then I concentrated on the psychology. And I paid a guy many thousands of dollars to help me through. And I have since had uh, regular contact with him. And I've also had contact with Steve. And I believe, for me, as a mentor for the last five or six years, that 95% of people who ultimately do not succeed at Forex, it's to do with the brain. It's to do with repeating silly mistakes over and over again and, and not following rules. And at the end of the day, I can shout at people all day long and, and beat the big drum and say, you know, be patient, be disciplined. But ultimately, what I came to learn is that you really need some help. If you worked in a bank or a big financial institution, you would have people watching over your shoulder and you would also be getting this kind of support that Steve is giving because that is his main focus working with bank traders and financial institutions because they all appreciate the fact that traders of whatever level need help controlling and, and dealing with emotions and all the, the things that go with it. So uh, thank you all for attending. I think that you're in for a bit of a treat tonight and uh, you do well to, to pay attention, take some notes, uh, and then you have something to review later on. But uh, once again, thank you to Steve, and I'll pass you back over to him. Thank you, Mark. Thanks for that. And... Um I'm just going to get myself organized here. Just bear with me for 60 seconds. Great. Yeah, there's a question come in. Uh, are we re recording the webinar? The webinar will be recorded, and I'll send a link out to you um, probably later on tonight or possibly tomorrow, depending on, on my schedule. So, yeah, the link will come out. So but have your pens and paper handy. Um, there will be a Q&A session. We'll do that at the end. I'd like to try and keep it as much as we can to topics we've covered during the webinar. Uh, certainly in terms of priority order and and then if we've got some time we'll do a few extra ones at the end as well as we go through the webinar if you've got a question relating to what we're talking about at the time again feel free to type it in I'll do my best to answer it in real time if it's appropriate uh, and if not also I'll just um, ask you to ask that question again but at the end of the webinar so I just start with a very brief intro to myself um, I recognize that many of you probably won't know who I am uh, my name is Steve Ward. I work full time as a trading performance and psychology coach. My clients include uh, many of the top investment banks uh, in the world, hedge funds, investment management funds, energy companies, proprietary trading groups. I also do quite a lot of webinars and seminars for retail traders, people like yourselves, predominantly trading from home. 
I've been working in trading since 2005. Before that, I worked in sports psychology. That was my background, working with athletes and teams in 33 different sports, international, naval, uh, national and Olympic level. Also spent a bit of time working in poker, um, coaching players from Poker Stars European Tour Team. And, uh, and wrote a book in 2009, or came out in 2009, called High Performance Trading. And there's a new one out. I've just been working on that one today. That's due out later this year. That's going to be called Trader Mind. So keep an eye out for that. So I've really enjoyed working with traders. I found it immensely challenging, I think, because trading itself is immensely challenging. So it's, uh, it's a very, for, for a psychology minded person, it's a very interesting area to work in. There always seems to be plenty to do, lots of commonalities uh, and lots of difference. So that's a little bit about me. This is what we're going to try and get through tonight. I want to talk to begin with about understanding what high performance trading is. Then we'll have a look at you know, what are the barriers that stop people from maximizing their profitability. And Mark's touched on a few of those at the beginning. And then I want to spend quite a lot of time talking about some strategies, some practical strategies and some ideas which you can use for overcoming those barriers and essentially getting the best out of yourself and your system. This is really the key factor. It's the, the intriguing puzzle in trading is you know, why lots of really smart, intelligent people seem to find it so difficult. And it's not, as Mark said, it's not the skills, it's not the conceptual knowledge. What it is, it's applying that in real time in the markets, predominantly because of the uncertainty and ambiguity that the market brings, uh, combined with taking financial decisions. So it's an interesting environment. So let's have a look at the four S's, as I call it. You know, let's try and think about what trading performance is and you know, what role does psychology play in trading? I think for many people, deep down, they realize that the psychology is a big part of their trading, yet interestingly, when it comes down to you know, where they focus their attention, it's often on the skills, acquiring knowledge, or developing strategy. So it's quite an interesting paradox. So here are the four S's. The first S is skills. You know, you need to have trading skills. The second S is strategy, which is important. You need a strategy, some kind of edge, some kind of competitive advantage. The next S, which is important, is your situation. Uh, and that's in terms of your environment and also the market. So things that are going on external to you. And the fourth S which is important in trading performance is yourself, which is you, your emotions, thoughts, feelings, energy levels, beliefs, perceptions, and so on. And it's a combination of all of those four which actually creates a great trader. And as Mark alluded to earlier, you know, I spend a lot of my time working in banks and hedge funds with traders who are very successful but are looking to either become more successful or to sustain that success, uh, as well as working with the junior traders and the graduates, trying to get them up to speed as quick as we can. Much like in sport and in the military, they've recognized the importance of psychology in the whole package. If you've got the skills and if you've got the strategy, and even if you're in a good situation, but you're suffering from anxiety or fear or stress, or your mindset is working against you, then you can't actually access that information. You can't actually execute the strategy as well as you could do. So you're not getting the best out of what you've got. And that's really, I think, the role or my role in working with traders is to try and help them to get the most out of themselves, to get the most from your skills, to get the most from your strategy, to get the most from the situation you're in. And that's all dependent upon yourself. And so really what it comes down to, I guess, is this. It's about you know, trying to have an effective trading strategy, but also the psychology to maximize its returns in any given set of market conditions. And that, that's you know, something we'll have a look at a bit later on in terms of flexibility. Now, what I'd like to do, uh, I ran a survey recently, and I asked people this question, which I'm going to put up on the screens in a moment. Fingers crossed, folks. Okay, so I've just launched a poll here, and the question really is, which of these factors do you feel is the most important one in terms of perhaps blocking progress or maybe is holding you back? And you can obviously 
choose one vote there. So you can only pick one out of those. But which one do you think has, you know, is, is the biggest factor that's maybe holding you back? So the poll should be on your screen there. You're allowed one vote only. Which one do you believe is the main factor which is holding you back? And we're just going to give you about another 10 seconds to get your votes in. And then we're going to stop the poll and we'll have a look at the results. Okay, final few seconds. Three, two, one. And we're closing there. Okay. Now, I don't know if you guys can see the poll at your end there, but here are the results. So we had 7% uh, of you said skills and knowledge, 9% strategy, 7% situation in terms of the environment, 1% were situation in terms of markets, and 75% went for the self. Now, that's interesting when we look at this in the context of my survey that I did. So I asked 240 people. Uh, these were a combination of bank traders, energy traders, fund traders, retail traders, and proprietary trading group traders. And we can see that, again, something very similar. I think this was around about 76, 77% were saying the biggest factor that was stopping them from improving was actually themselves. So, you know, it could be emotions, could be perception, it could be energy, um, but it's something that's internal. The interesting thing about the survey that I did, uh, which is here on the screen, I also asked people what they were doing to try and, you know, um, overcome that. And most people, the most popular answer was basically working harder, doing research and analysis. Uh, and when it came to training and coaching, they were actually quite low, which again, I found quite interesting because the challenge really with yourself and your mindset is it can be difficult to fix it on yourself. And, and I say that um, as, a, as a coach and psychology expert myself, um, who, who still is no, you know, not achieved after many, many years of working in this area, anywhere near um, the perfect mindset or emotional management that maybe people would expect you to have. Uh, you know, we're humans, we're imperfect. And, and for me to really develop myself, I have to engage my own coach and own psychologist. So it's, uh, it's an interesting one. So when we look about the self, um, it's interesting the role that the self plays in trading. So you may identify with some of these behaviors. So these are all trading behaviors that people kind of would know maybe they don't want to be doing, but find themselves doing probably all too often. Uh, and maybe this is true for yourselves. You know, maybe you can identify with some of these. So perhaps just into the uh, Q&A box there, just type in for me the one which for you perhaps is the biggest challenge. So which one do you have the biggest challenge with? Okay, there's a few people I think maybe aren't seeing the screen. I'm not sure why that is. Let's just check here. Uh, okay. Apologies. I think for some reason, I'm not sure why, when the poll launched, it cut off my screen. My apologies. So, uh, so here's our list of common trading behaviors. And we're just, I'm just curious, really, you know, for you guys, you know, what, what it is. Is it, you know, taking profit too early? Is that the main challenge? Is it running losses? Is it chasing losses? Revenge trading, we might call that. Is it not pulling the trigger? For some of you, maybe it's taking too much risk. For some of you, maybe it's taking too little risk. Boredom trading could be a factor. It's, just have a little think for yourself now, you know, which ones of those are affecting you. My guess is probably it won't be anyone in particular. You might have, you know, a, a combination of those. Uh, some of you are very bravely putting down all of them, and that's great. You know, I think one of the key things before you can 
fix any kind of challenge, overcome it, we have to at first accept we have that challenge. Um, and, and so that's a good starting place. And these challenges, folks, by the way, they're nothing to, to worry about. I mean, I, I say I see traders all the time, some of them are very successful, who still are prone to these behaviors. Okay, so here's something again that I think is quite interesting to be thinking about. All of us as, as traders, and, and I guess it's probably important to share that I traded myself from 2006 through to 2010 uh, quite regularly, not, as, not for a living, but just in order to kind of really get a taste and a flavor for what trading was all about from the other side of the desk, so to speak. But when we're trading, we all know we've got what I call these crucial moments, and crucial moments are that point where we're at risk you know so revenge trading for example that would be a typical one where you know you've had a losing trade and if you are someone who likes to chase losses and you you will know that after a losing trade that would be a crucial moment and you know if you're someone who is prone to boredom trading you'll know that when the markets go quiet that that is going to be an area of potential risk so just think for yourself now, when are your crucial moments? You know, when is your decision making, when is the risk the highest? And so for some people, these would be some of the reasons that affect them. So factors like, you know, when they're, when they're stressed, and actually I've just, someone's just typed that in, you know, when I'm stressed is, is somebody's response. Uh, when there's high uncertainty, when people are short of time, or when energy is low, when emotion is high, when we've got a very strong outcome focus, when, you know, we're too fixed on our P&L when we are unprepared or when our mindset's not quite right, maybe something's on our mind, uh, when our attention is, is not fully focused on the, on the factors that really matter uh, or our motivation, all of these can you know, play a part in increasing our decision risk. And we can't make all these go away. This is one of my, the big points I try and make to people is we can't change the fact we're human. We can't change the fact that the markets are uncertain. Uh, and therefore, we can't change a number of these factors. However, we can certainly reduce them, and some of them we can get to a pretty low level. And that's really, I guess, key to my approach, is trying to reduce the risk in our decision making. So when we, we, let's have a little quick look. And again, you know, I'm going to try and cover a few big themes, but quite quickly tonight. So I think it's important to recognize you know, how the decision making process works. So there are certain times we're going to be at risk. Uh, and then why is that? Well, when we are trading, we're basically going through these four stages of this cycle, observe, orientate, decide, and act, which came from the, the um, psychology and research into how fighter pilots make decisions. And I think it works really well in trading. So we have a period of observation. So you're watching your screens, your charts, maybe fundamental news coming in, or your data. And... The next phase is orientation. This is the key phase because that's how you make sense of that information. And that orientation phase will be unique for everybody. So that's why we have a market. We can all observe the same data, yet we all make different decisions, which is stage three, and take different action in stage four, not because of what we've observed, but because of how we've made sense of that in the orientation phase. So this is... I guess from my perspective, when we look at the psychology of trading, is where it starts to get pretty exciting because what's interesting is what is going on in the orientation phase. If you are planning to do something, you know, take your trade to a certain profit level or get out at a certain stop loss point, and yet you're not, you know, you're making a decision, maybe it's not the decision that you'd planned to make, but you are making a decision, and the reason why you're making that decision is housed inside that orange box there, the orientation phase. 
So what can be useful when you're reflecting on your trading decisions is to start to think about, well, what was I observing? What was the market doing? What decision did I make and what action did I take? And then you can kind of start to get a bit of a glimmer, some insight into what was going on in the orientation phase. And it can be a whole number of factors. So there are, there are lots of things that affect us that influence our decisions. There's the context we made the decision under. So the situation we're in, our environment, our current results and performance, life events, the time of day, the time of month, the time of year, all these factors can affect a decision and often outside conscious awareness. Our skills and knowledge, the strategy we're trading. Uh, those of you familiar with behavioral finance or with behavioral economics will know there's a number of biases, basically mental shortcuts that the brain makes to make decisions. Your motivation, you know, what you're trading for, the goals you've set yourself, any incentives, they're going to factor in in that orientation phase. Your beliefs and your perceptions, you know, what your beliefs are about risk and uncertainty about the markets, they're going to factor in there. Again, largely unconscious. Emotions. Attention, you know, what you're focused on at the time. Are you focused on making a good trade or are you focused on not losing or winning? Biology can play a factor. Uh, we know that, for example, the hormones of testosterone and cortisol, the stress hormone cortisol and the risk-taking hormone testosterone play a big part in driving our behavior. Our physical energy levels are important. Your habitual responses and patterns, a lot of what you do is patterned. You know, you, you've done it two or three times before and, and then you get good at it. And I like to look, actually, when I look at trading behavior, uh, I always, when I'm working with clients, I always talk about them as skills. So if you're somebody who is um, having problems taking losses, then basically you've developed a skill of not taking losses. If you're somebody who is not so good at running profits, perhaps, then you're somebody who has developed a skill of not running profits. So all of our behaviors can be quite usefully viewed as skills. And I, I like that frame because underlying all that is this um, presupposition that we can, if it's a skill, we can train it. So if we've learned one skill and that skill is not useful, then we can learn a different skill that maybe is more useful. So um, it's interesting to think about trading behaviors, whether you think it's useful or not, but they're all skills. So everything you do is a skill. And then the question is, is that a useful skill or not? Uh, and if not, then obviously it's, it's a time and an opportunity to learn a new skill. Gut feeling, intuition, that can influence a decision. And also our past experiences in terms of our trading patterns and our life patterns. So, so a lot is going on in that, in that um, orange box, the orientation phase. Now, I'd like to tonight try and give you some ideas. You know, what can we do? How can we start to reduce the impact of some of these decision influences? How can we start to maybe work more effectively with emotions, manage our mindset more effectively? How do we keep the brain focused on what is useful in our trading? These are all going to be key questions. And there are lots of things that we can do. Now, I've tried to uh, break down trading psychology into these sort of five factors. So at the core of it all, we've got the brain, uh, and I've got a really big interest in, in, in the brain and neuroscience. I think it's really key in trading. And then around the outside, we've got cognition, which is basically our thinking processes. So we've got motivation, attention, and perception in there. Then we've got affect, which is the feeling. It's our mood. It's our emotions. Then we've got the physical sensations, things that come from our heart, from the gut, our energy levels, and then the behavioral components in terms of habits and actions. And it's the interplay of all these factors which is driving your trading decisions and your performance at any given time. So, you know, if you look at the orange box, the orientation phase, we can start to think about what's going on in there in terms of those boxes. So now... I recently ran a two-day course for some traders at a bank, and we, we, were, we were there from 9 till 5.30 every day uh, with not a lot of breaks. And I found in that, uh, in that two days that we basically just started to touch on and get into a few good themes based around these topics here that we're going to look at. So we just have to be mindful that in sort of the next half an hour or so, we'll touch on some of these 
Uh, I want to give you some insights I think are going to be useful, and I want to give you two or three little techniques as well to go away with. Uh, but it is an introduction, so, so do have that kind of in mind as we go through. I'm just going to check here because I'm just mindful that I've had, okay, cool, okay, all good. Okay. So I want to start with attention. It's not something we typically hear about or read about in trading psychology, which is interesting in itself because actually everything we do in terms of our trading decisions and behavior is probably attention dependent. And, and we can think about attention more broadly in trading as attention around ourselves, attention to others, and attention to the environment. And, and probably one of the most important tasks that you can do for yourselves, and this would be a good task to go away and think about, is to, what are the important factors to pay attention to? So what are the important factors to pay attention to? So when you're trading, what actually matters? What are the key factors? I sometimes call them the critical factors to pay attention to. Uh, and one way you can start to make that, um, I guess, a more specific process is, is break the trading down. So you could start with, for example, uh, preparation and research. And then what would be the important things to pay attention to in preparation and research? Then you could go to the end of, of the trading cycle, go to the evaluation phase. And again, what's important to pay attention to at the end of the trading day or the end of the trading session? And then if we take the, the, the center phase of trading, what I call the execution phase, we have five main phases. And those phases would be monitor or observe, so we're kind of observing or monitoring. Phase two would be spotting opportunity. Phase three, entering the market. Phase four, management. And phase five is exits. Now, in each of those five stages of a trade, there will be specific cues, specific things we're going to want to be paying attention to that are going to give us the best chance of making the best decision possible. And there'll be other things that we could pay attention to that actually will become distractions and take us away from uh, our best trading decisions. A very simple example is, um, for example, we might have an opportunity where we're, we're you know, about to get into a trade. And if our mind drifts too much onto, you know, will I lose money on this trade? Our attention on the P&L, on you know, the will we lose, might actually affect the entry and that's the same obviously for our management and the exits in our trade you know too much attention on on to um outcome will we win or lose will will actually affect us i just pausing there stuttering because a few people have just typed in do i have that on a slide i don't have it on a slide um but what i can do is i'm going to type it in here so these are going to be the five stages and i shall type them into the box for you Just bear with me for a moment. Uh, monitor, observe, spot opportunity, enter, manage, and exit. Okay, cool. So think about your, you know, your trading. That's almost gives you a framework to work within. And it's the same for your thinking. It's the same for emotions. If you think about that model of, of trading, three big phases, planning, execution, evaluation and within the execution phase that, that that five stages of the trade then you can begin to you know literally almost create a blueprint for where to focus on uh, what emotions you'd like to kind of have you know, the kind of thought processes and so on but remember that just kind of came as an aside there from uh, from attention which is key so let's start by just thinking about oh, my apology sorry that did come up there. Let's look at attention in terms of attention on self. And this is really important because when you have a well-developed attention, and this is you know the ability to focus on yourself, to notice, it actually builds 
self-regulation, which is the ability to manage emotions and behavior and thinking, which gives us this ability, this feeling of self-control, or what we would probably call in trading discipline. So attention on self is really, really, really important. And it, you can train it, so it's like a muscle, so you can train attention, and we're gonna do in a few moments time, in a couple of slides time, I'm gonna take you through a very short attention training technique. Uh, for those of you familiar with things like meditation or mindfulness, then those practices are very good at building attention. We spent quite a lot of time in sports psychology working with athletes on attention. Um, for the same reasons, you know, it, it, if you've got a poor attention, it's pretty difficult to do anything well. It's hard to read a book. It's hard to watch TV. It's hard to have a conversation. It's hard to play an instrument. It's hard to play sport. And it's very hard to trade the financial markets if your attention isn't well developed. Uh, it underpins a lot of what the other things that we do. So, so attention is key. Attention on self is noticing, you know, paying attention to your own experience, to your thinking, to your feeling, to your the physical sensations, to urges and impulses, and so on. The second component of attention is attention on the environment. This is what we call situational awareness. This is very um, largely talked about in military circles. It's the ability to read the environment around you, to notice what's going on and make the appropriate decisions. And then we've also got attention on others, which in trading terms would be getting a feel for the market, getting a sense of what other people are doing, why they're doing that. Uh, it's called theory of mind. That's what T-O-M there, theory of mind is about that ability of one person to understand another person's you know, inner workings, their thoughts, feelings, behaviors, and what they might do. And that's been seen actually recently in research as quite, um, as possibly uh, a big factor in why the best traders outperform the rest, is this ability to read and feel the market to get a sense of the human factor. So in very quick terms, attention is important but it's a threefold process. There's attention to self, attention to the environment, and attention to others. Now, each of those three factors has got very strong links to um, the ability to achieve high performance in trading and to make good quality trading decisions. It's very hard to have discipline, which is what most people you know, crave for, if your attention of yourself, if self-attention, self-awareness is low. It's very hard to sit in front of the screen and read what the market is doing if you've got poor situational awareness. And if you want the, you know, the real extra bonus, the edge in trading, that comes from understanding the market as a collection of people, uh, not just blindly doing what you want to do, but looking at the context of the market. Now, what's interesting about attention is through some very simple practices, you can actually develop all those three areas systematically uh, by training the attention areas in the brain. It is literally just like training a muscle. And I do a lot of this work with my, my own trading clients. Um, and so I'd like to take you through a short one now. We're going to do this for about three minutes, so just so you know the time frame. And this is a nice, simple attention training process. We're going to do the activity first. Then I'm going to talk you through what you've done and the process that you've been through and why it's valuable. Now, whenever we're training attention, we want to make sure that we are sitting in an upright position and reminding ourselves that the intention is to practice and develop attention. So this is a mental training technique. The outcomes of this are improved attention uh, across all those three dimensions, which is really important. You're if you do this consistently, uh, you'll actually get measurable brain uh, changes in terms of gray matter in the brain. That's what we found out from lots of the neuroscience research into attention training. Uh, and you can do this pretty much anywhere, all these types of techniques, so they're very usable. So I'm going to talk you through the technique for about three minutes, and I say then we'll look at in more detail what we've been doing. So. This is the foundation, really, of, of everything else psychological for me is, is attention. So just allowing yourself to get into a comfortable seated position. And if you wish to do this eyes closed, you can do that. If you'd rather do it eyes open, that's okay too. 
maybe just a loose gaze down towards the floor. And just take a moment to just scan through the body, starting at the head, working down through the body, down to the feet, just becoming aware of any areas of tension or discomfort. And not necessarily trying to change them in any way, but just noticing. And as you notice the tension, just become aware if it lessens in some way. And now I'd like you to bring your attention to the, the physical sensations of where you're sitting on the chair. So that point of contact between your bottom and the chair. I'd like to invite you now to keep your attention on those sensations. So just really trying to get a sense of what it's like to be seated on the chair, the feeling of weight on the chair, keeping your attention there for as long as you can, but noticing the tendency for the mind to wander, so you might find your mind is now drifted off and thinking about something different that isn't the sensations of the chair, and that's okay, when the mind wanders, I want you to notice, where did it wander to, what did I start thinking about, acknowledge it, and then just refocus now back onto the sensations of being on the chair. And just stay with that same process, keeping attention on the sensations of being seated on the chair, the weight the feeling of being seated. Every time your mind wanders, just notice that it's wandered. Recognize where it's wandered to, acknowledge it, and then return your attention back onto those sensations again. If the mind wanders 50 times, it doesn't matter. Just bring it back 50 times. And now just bringing your attention back, if it's not there already, back to the sensations of sitting on the chair. Just also notice the sensations of feet on the floor. Bring an awareness to any sounds in the room around you or outside. And then just bringing your attention back now into the room to this webinar in this moment now. And if you've had your eyes closed, just opening your eyes and bringing full attention back into this moment. And there we are, that's probably for some of you your first attention training technique. And this is what you've been doing. We've been training the four skills of attention. First of all, knowing where we want the mind to be, what do we want to focus on? And remember we talked about earlier, for each of the five stages of the trade, for the planning, for the execution, for the evaluation, we need to know where we want our attention to be. If our attention is not in the right place, we will not be producing our best performance and decisions. So we need to know initially, where do I need to focus on? Then the skill becomes to recognize actually, when your mind is not where you want it to be. And this distractibility is often actually what, what underpins you know, lack of discipline, is people are focused on on the matters that, that, that don't actually matter in that moment. Uh, and that takes them away from their best performances. It's where the errors occur. It's where we focus maybe on our feelings, not on the market, on our thinking, not on the price, and so on. But once we recognize that our mind has wandered, we can then bring it back so we can refocus and then aim to keep it there. So they're the four stages of attention, the four skills of attention. And each time we're doing any one of those four, whether we're keeping it there, bringing it back, and noticing it's wandered, 
we're actually building mental muscle. Yeah, literally, just like going to the gym, you'll see verifiable changes in grey matter in the brain through consistent practice. And that consistent practice of attention training has an impact on your self-attention, your ability to monitor yourself, to be the observer of your own experience, which is very important for self-regulation and self-control. It will also improve, interestingly, your situational awareness because your attentional muscle will be stronger. And you'll also probably notice uh, a bit more empathy and an ability to feel the market because you'll have a better connection um, and understanding and awareness of other people around you. So really, really interesting. Again, I could talk for you for days on this matter. We've only got minutes. So hopefully it's just been an insight. The importance is really, really important and a little technique you could go away and do. And look, the slides are in there. So three to five minutes a day. Um, give it a go. That's a very simple, very basic one, but it will give you the feeling um, of, of what you can do. So let's now stick with um, cognition. I want you to type in to the box now, what can you see on your screen now? What does that phrase or sentence say? Okay, just giving you a little bit of time to do some uh, some typing. Okay, so we've got uh, we've got a good mixture. We've got a good mixture. Okay, so I think we're probably about 50-50 on this. Uh, some of you have seen this. Opportunities are now here. Sorry, nowhere. And some of you saw this. Opportunities are now here. So we all saw this. And then some of you saw this. Some of you saw this. So it is perception and you know, we're all looking at the same thing but we perceived it differently now it's not a psychological test here by the way folks so don't worry uh, which one you saw but it's, it's important because perception is really key to our trained decisions and having awareness of those perceptions is important so when you're trading the market you've got the market information going on around you whatever that data is that's you know that's relevant for you and it comes in through your mind. So, so it comes in through mindset, which I've called in the books their perceptions. And out of that comes emotion and behavior. So the events of the market themselves, what the market is doing, isn't the driver of your emotion and behavior. Um, although it, it, it can be, this is a simplified model, a mindset model, cognitive model. Uh, but your perception is a big driver of those emotions and behavior. So what's interesting is actually your trading isn't actually you trading the markets, but it's you trading your perceptions, your beliefs about the market. And that's an important, disting uh, an important factor, distinction to make. So if this is the case, then actually it's really important to have an awareness of what your perceptions about the market are, your perceptions about trading, winning, losing, risk uncertainty yourself success money the list goes on because whatever is going on in your mindset whatever those perceptions and beliefs are they are the filters that are driving your emotions and your trading behavior and again a nice exercise you can do is look at times when maybe you're getting emotions and behaviors that you that you are maybe undesirable for you in your trading and not useful Look at the events that were going on in the market, and then you can start to work out what was going on in the middle. So what was, my, what was my belief or my perception would have been that would have taken me from that event to that emotion or from that event to that behavior? And that's what I think is really useful. Something else that's really important that you can do around mindset is actually sit down one day and give yourself you know, a good hour or more. And, and start to think about, you know, what are my beliefs and perceptions? What do I believe about the markets? What do I believe, uh, believe about trading? What do I believe about winning? What do, I what do I believe about losing? You know, 
um, is losing a part of trading that's that's a good belief or you know is losing bad um, I worked with a trader probably a little while ago now a year and a half two years ago who had this belief that the markets were impossible to trade was going through a really tough patch getting very down and that, and had formed this perception the markets are impossible to trade well you imagine you're sitting in front of your screen information coming in through that perception through that filtering system of the markets are impossible to trade and you can imagine what emotions and behaviors were coming out the other end so you know we have to have that awareness so you know you can start to uncover what these awarenesses are by working backwards what's in that middle box or sit down I, I often do it on my courses things like um, I'll have, have what we call sentence starters like um, I am I am not uh, losing is losing is not winning is winning is not trading is trading is not and I'll get people then to write down as many statements as they can that they feel are true for them with those sentence starters and, and it's interesting what people come out with um, you, know, you might have trading is exciting uh, that's an interesting belief uncertainty is an important one you know, your belief about uncertainty because humans generally don't like uncertainty we try and do everything we can to kind of make things more certain yet the markets are full of uncertainty uh, I was just writing today in my book uh, about the concept of impermanence that everything is changing and actually if you can begin to see things as being impermanent and that, that the markets and yourself are in a constant state of change then we can reduce a bit of attachment to certainty and kind of let go a little bit um, and be okay with uncertainty you know that's that's the best traders understand that you know that there is uncertainty um, we can't always predict what's going to happen and we don't always need to be able to and then and again we haven't got time for these right now but you know there are techniques that you can learn to manage your mind to to basically create greater mental flexibility so um, you may have heard of the technique of reframing. Reframing is you know, being able to see something in a different way. So I was working with some young traders recently at a, a proprietary trading group, and they, they've just gone live in the market. So they've been trading on the simulator. They've just gone live. And we were talking about you know, the, how their mindset has now shifted. They were really focused on learning on the sim. Now they've gone live. They've all gone really intensely focused on not, trying, not losing money, uh, not making mistakes and obviously trying to make a bit of money and it's really changed their trading and it's a shift in mindset they've gone from basically a learning mindset into an earning mindset and in their earning mindset they've become afraid of making mistakes so they're seeing mistakes as being bad you know I mustn't make mistakes but actually they're only three months into their trading careers they're going to be learning for the next year or two and actually mistakes are part of learning so and if you see a mistake as being a bad thing and something to be avoided, that's very different to seeing a mistake as a learning opportunity. And, and purely that shift, in, um, that shift in mindset can actually affect then the emotions and behavior. So it's really important. So, you know, really have a good thing. You know, maybe over the next couple of days, uh, have a pen and paper handy and, and catch yourself. You know, look at your thoughts. If you write down a lot of your key thoughts about trading uh, and investing, you'll start to be able to uncover what some of your mindsets, your perceptions and beliefs are. So I want to have a look at emotion. Mark mentioned emotion at the start. It's a big topic again. But I want to just launch a quick poll here. Let's see how we get on with this one here. So there are two options on this one here. The question is, I want to trade without emotion and the option is either true or false Okay, last five seconds, and I'm going to close the poll. We've got 70% uh, of you have voted, which is great. We did have 80% in the last one, though, so 
be nice to try and get back over, over the 80% mark if we can. Just go with your gut. I'd like to trade with that emotion, true or false. And three, two, one, and okay, gonna close the poll there. Okay, so we had 69% of you went for true and 31% of you said false. Okay, just got a couple of guys here who need to leave now to go to work. Thanks for joining us. Uh, just, you know, at the end of the webinar, there's uh, a chance to get a free book. So when you've watched the recording, uh, make sure you get to the end there and you'll have a chance of getting your free book. So 70% roughly are saying we want to trade without emotion. That's really interesting because that is how definitely most people think about emotions. We want to trade without emotion or we want to be able to control our emotions. Now what's interesting is there's been a major shift in thinking around the role of emotions, particularly in trading and investing. And that revolves around a lot of neuroscience research over the last five or six years. Uh, and it's, it's created a shift away from this idea of emotions being bad to actually almost the opposite, that, that emotions are essential to trading. And so there are three key things I want to, or three key points as a summary that are really critical for you guys to try and take on board. And I recognize for some of you, this is gonna be a big mindset shift. It was for me, I've had to shift my thinking as well. But emotions are key to decisions. So when information comes into your brain, interestingly, the first place it goes to is into the amygdala in the core of the limbic system. And what the amygdala do is it, is it attaches emotion into, so it attaches emotion to the information coming in, and then it sends it up to the cortex, to the thinking part of the brain. The second factor is that actually emotions are data. So the brain has evolved with the, the thinking part of the brain to be the last part that evolved. For, for, you know, for thousands, hundreds of thousands of years, we had to survive and navigate around without having a well-developed thinking system. So emotions became our guide. They helped us to identify risk, to identify reward, uh, to produce the energy that engaged us in action. So at a core level, emotions are like data. So the first thing I want you to do is, is see if you can make this shift to, okay, you know, emotions are key to decisions. Yeah, that's critical. They can be really helpful, particularly when we see them as data. You know, what is this emotion telling me? If I'm feeling fear, fear is the anticipation of danger. That's a very useful emotion. You know, we see lots of talk about, you know, fear being a bad thing in trading. And, you know, and, and I've written articles myself in the past about, you know, trading without fear. Um, actually, that, that would be completely um, unhelpful. It'd be like going around the world without a sense of fear. At some point, um, it would have an unhappy ending. Fear is the anticipation of danger. It's not so much the emotions we have that are the problem, folks. It's actually it's the action we take when we've got the emotions, and we'll kind of touch on that a little bit later. The other key thing is that um, avoiding emotions or trying to suppress them or avoid them or get rid of them actually is very unhelpful and actually ineffective. Um, the best way to work with emotions or deal with them is actually to work with them, to, to embrace them. Uh, a big step, I know, and, and I always enjoy this part in my workshops when I work with traders and even in coaching to help them to make this shift because I know if they can make the shift such a big impact on their trading. So here's a technique that you can use. You can take this away, you can use it as a five step technique or you can pick out bits of it, whatever you're comfortable with, um, but this can really help you. So the first stage to managing emotion is actually having an awareness of what you're feeling. Interestingly, there was a, a study done uh, two or three years ago now, and they found that about 36% of people had good awareness of their emotions in the present moment, uh, which meant that roughly two-thirds of people didn't. Now, unless you're able to identify, have an awareness of your moment-to-moment -moment emotions, and this is where we go back to our attention that we started at the beginning of the session on, then it's very difficult to manage or regulate emotions. So the first step is we must have that attention and start noticing what I'm feeling. That could be as simple as, sitting down at your trading screen and during the course of the trading day as you notice an emotion as it comes to mind or as you feel it 
write it down on a bit of paper, but just start to notice. It could be also as simple as setting an alarm and every 10 minutes or 15 or 30 or 60, whatever you're comfortable with, set an alarm and as it pings or the alarm goes off, just notice, check in, how am I feeling right now? As you do that, label the emotion, name what you are feeling. Uh, good research from, from neuroscience now showing that when we name an emotion, actually it reduces the emotional reactivity in the brain. Most people are afraid to name the emotion, or I'm feeling stressed, or I've got some fear, or I'm a bit anxious, because they think by naming it, they'll feel worse. It's actually the opposite. You feel better. It's a bit like, you know, you've had the messengers come to the door, the messenger is trying to give you the message, this is the emotion. When we take the message, it's like saying thank you, message received, and then it can quieten down. When we try and shut the door on the messenger, try and block it out, keep it in, he pushes harder, we push harder, they push harder, we push harder, and we're fighting, we're struggling with that emotion, using up energy, getting ourselves more and more um, wound up, more fired up, and actually that's not helpful. So. Awareness, noticing, labeling, name it, name the feeling you've got, accept it. This is a key thing. In that moment, in that very moment you've got the emotion, you've got it. Just notice it, label it, let it be there in that moment, and then you can start to understand it. I've just had a losing trade. I want to get back in the market, but before I pull the trigger, I'm sensing some, what is that feeling I've got? It's anxiety. Okay, here's me feeling anxious. Just let it be there for a moment. Okay, well, why would that be? Okay, it's just, I've just had a losing trade. Maybe it's my second one in a row. I'm a bit anxious about getting into the market again in case I lose again. Okay, when I get to this stage, suddenly the emotional experience is very different. And what it allows me to do now is focus on taking the action that's important in that moment, what I sometimes call the effective or the skillful action. And, and again, this is the key thing. A lot of blame goes on emotion, but emotion has never made you or lost you any money. Uh, it's impossible. You can only make or lose money through action. So it's not so much the emotions, it's the actions we take while we're feeling those emotions. And with greater awareness and with a more accepting, approaching type mentality, actually the emotions affect us less. We're embracing them. It's a different relationship and we can actually focus much more on taking the action we want to take. And that's what's key underneath it all is taking the effective action. Okay, we're getting towards the end. I think we've just got uh, one or two more things to cover before we get to the Q&A. So thanks for bearing with me. Hopefully everything's okay so far and you're getting some good value from what we're talking about. So let's have a look at this. So again, I'm going to put you into the polling seat in a minute. This is one of my favorite studies, came from some research done with parole boards in, uh, in Israel. And lots of cases obviously seen during every day. And this is a sample from one of the days. So there were lots of people who were heard, lots of cases were heard on this day. We've got a selection of three um, that were heard on that day. And what I'd like you to do when I launch the poll is to vote for which person do you think was released? Okay, so I'm going to launch the poll now. So out of the three people on the screen there, which one do you think was released? Only one person was released, but who was it? Case one, case two, or case three? I'm guessing now the polls come up and I'm guessing probably you've lost a screen, have you? So case one is a, was heard at 8.50 a.m. in the morning. And that was an Arab Israeli with a 30-month sentence for fraud. Case two was 10 past three in the afternoon. That was a Jewish Israeli serving a 16-month sentence for assault. And case three, heard at 4.25 p.m., was an Arab Israeli serving a 30-month sentence for fraud. Okay. 
I've just suddenly realised that whenever I launch a poll, I, it's taken the screen away, isn't it? So, my apologies. Okay, let's just close the poll there. Thanks for your responses. Here are the questions, probably when they're least helpful after you've already done the poll. Um, so thanks for voting. Apologies there that some of you lost the, the image. We had 33% went for case one, 25% for case two, and 42% for case three. So what people were interested in in the study was, what were the main factors that affected people's uh, parole decision. So, uh, you know, was it their sentence? Was it the crime they'd committed? Was it uh, their culture? But what they found was not what they were looking for or what they were expecting because the biggest factor that affected whether a person was paroled or not was time of day. Time of day. So, 1,100 decisions over a year. One third of people got paroled, but if you were paroled or if you had your meeting in the morning, you had a 70% chance of getting parole, irrespective of any other factor. If you went later in the day, as in case three situation, you only had a 10% chance of being paroled. And interestingly, the next best time, if you could get this slot, was after lunch. Well, why is that? Why is the morning better? And why is after lunch better? And why is the end of the day worse? Just give it a little bit of a thought and type in your answer there into the box. So why would the morning be better? And why would after lunch be better? And the afternoon be the worst? What factors are going to affect that decision making process? So someone's gone for focus and attention, and that's definitely right. It is about focus and attention. But what do we need? What is it that we need that helps us to focus and pay attention? So someone's got less tired. Good, we're on the right lines now. Good decision makers, fresh and relaxed. Good energy. Here we go. Here we go. We're on to it now, guys. We're on to it. Good. So this is all related to energy. What they found was, when the parole board were at their freshest early in the day and after lunch and after the morning break, when they had a rest and they had refueled, so they had glucose back in the system, they were able to make the, uh, the, the decisions to actually let people out. Because for a parole board person, the easiest decision to make is to keep a person in. That's your low risk decision. Letting someone out of prison, you've got to kind of justify that. You've got to think it through. You've got to be really considered and careful. That takes energy. So people were making, at the end of the day with low energy, they were making the simplest decisions. Keep them in. In trading terms, this is very important because particularly for some of you guys, you'll be working all day and maybe making some major decisions, and then you'll be coming home in the evenings perhaps and trading. And this is called decision fatigue. It's the impact of, um, you know, every time we're making a decision, we're using glucose, we're using fuel, and that is finite to a degree. Now, we can't just keep making these decisions all day long. So we, um, we have to refuel. We have to refuel. Okay, so I was just checking. I thought my screen wasn't showing, but it is. Okay, apologies. Um, so it's really important during the course of a trading session, particularly if you're trading during the whole day, that through that day you're giving yourself some breaks and you're giving yourself the chance to, to refuel. Um, it sounds like quite a simple thing, but it's actually absolutely critical. And, and certainly when I work in banks and some of the funds, um, they really recognize the importance of energy on trading and are doing, you know, doing a lot to address this. And I've noticed in lots of day traders, particularly if they've been busy during the morning, there is a decline in the afternoon. And this is one of the reasons behind that. So um, glucose, glucose and rest. The final part of the puzzle was our kind of behaviors. And I'm going to sort of skip through this a little bit because we've mentioned parts of this. But there's your three, K, three phases of... Um, the trading cycle, so planning, execution, evaluation, we talked about earlier. 
And what's really important in terms of being a trader, and again, you know, think about this for yourself, is you want to build good habits in each of those three stages. You know, what are the behaviors I need to be doing in each of those three stages? That, that's the big question. Yeah. Uh, and actually draw up for yourself, you know, a checklist. Checklist can be very powerful. You know, what do I need to focus on and be doing when I'm planning, when I'm executing, when I'm evaluating? Um, go back to what I talked about earlier. It's about building skills. Whether those skills are useful or not will depend upon you and your situation. But everything we're doing, every behavior we're doing consistently is building a skill. And we want to be actively building good trading behavior. Uh, it's very easy to form habits. It's not so easy. To, to change them or build new ones to replace them. So, um, you know, really focus on, you know, what are the behaviors? And this is why focusing on your process is so important. You know, your trading should be driven by your trading process and then trying to get the most, you know, develop that process over time um, and evolve it over time and not get too sucked into just the winning or losing, which isn't always that useful. So here's some things you can do to maybe try and put this into action. First of all, maybe a nice activity to do. Think about skills. Think about strategy. Think about situation. Think about yourself. You could rate yourself out of 10 for each of those four components. You know, where do you need to take the action? I think we had, was it 70% of you? The self was the challenge. Even if your challenge is skill or strategy, sometimes it's how you think about that or the emotions that that drives which can which can be need working on you know where are your crucial moments think about that you know and and what can you bring into those moments where can you you know where are you paying attention what behaviors behaviors are you doing right now you know what could you do differently what changes could you make to perception or emotion or energy all big factors that can really make a difference. So we'll come to the Q&A in just a moment. I'd just like to take literally a minute or two of your time and just make you aware that starting on April the 23rd, I'm going to be running a trading psychology program online. I run this program probably every couple of years, not too often, uh, and only really uh, on demand. And there's, there's been high demand over the last couple of years to run something, but it's quite tricky with my, my travel schedule. But I've managed to put a program together this year, which is going to be, I think, probably the best one I've ever done. We're going to do eight sessions at two weekly intervals, so eight webinars, two weeks apart. Each one will be like tonight, roughly 90 minutes with about 60 minutes of content and 30 minutes of, of Q&A. And we'll look at all those topics in depth, motivation in depth, beliefs and perceptions, but more in depth, emotions more in depth, behavior, habits, building habits, developing attention and self-control. So a lot of the themes we've kind of touched on, but in much greater depth, a lot more practical strategies. That's really what we've got the time for when we've got the longer webinars on each one. And I try and make it a really immersive experience in terms of uh, there's activities to do before the webinars we obviously the webinar is relatively interactive there's follow-up activities to do after the webinar I also provide email support between sessions and after the course so you can ask questions about what you've done you can get help with trying to implement it and I think that's really important uh, in these sorts of programs there's mp3 downloads to listen to there's little video links to watch so over the course of what will be probably about 12 13 weeks it's a very immersive experience, really getting down and focusing on, you know, the psychology of trading, uh, the mindset, emotions, uh, and, you know, a combination of, of bits of insight and, and theory where appropriate, but then lots of practical experience. The, the program, uh, I've run it about six or seven times over the years. Every person who's been on it, and it's hundreds, if not even well over a thousand people now, I've always said they'd recommend it to another trader. That's something I'm really proud of myself. And um, FX Trader Magazine this year have given it their mark of excellence, which, which again, and I'm very pleased with. The details of the course you can find at the web link there, which is www.highperformanceglobal.com and then forward slash online. Uh, 
if you've got questions you want to ask about the program, having seen it or, or even before you've had a look, feel free to contact me on the email there. A uh, question is coming there, which is a good one. Considering all of your current engagements, where will you find quality time to work with those of us here today? Uh, interested in the offer? Um, well, what I've done, and it's a great question, is because I'm running the program, I've actually put it into my calendar specifically. So it's actually built in. So it's not an add-on. Uh, so all the days that I do my webinars on, those days are days when I'll be at home, as will the day afterwards. So uh, basically two days out of my working week, uh, I'm going to be focused on the webinar, so it's a big commitment for me. We get, you know, a good number of people on there, and it's really important to me that it's a very personal experience. Um, and um, yeah, so the, so the the time is there for you. That that's what we've done it for. So um, I've never ever not answered an email. Normally, I have to wait 24 hours before you get a reply, but you'll get something within 24 hours or so. And um, it's something I didn't used to do, but I just think it's so important, so important. Now, I just want to take literally just a little bit longer on the program in terms of this, that uh, I've spoken with Mark and we'd like to have a, an exclusive offer for the FX Mentor Pro and, 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 and Mark's clients and, and contacts. And so we're going to give a 10% off the price. The course is £495 at full price. If you use the voucher code FXMA10, you'll get 10% off the price, which will obviously make it uh, £49.50 cheaper. I'll let you guys do the maths. Um, and, and also what I've done, and I, and I don't normally do this, but um, I've also, I'm going to throw in a free, uh, I don't know if the signed copy makes it any more valuable or less, but it would be a free copy of, of my book, High Performance Trading, uh, which is £25 on Amazon at the moment. Uh, if you sign up before Monday the 14th of April. Uh, that will just make it easier for me with the admin because it takes me a week to get everyone kind of registered and logged on. So that's why it, uh, there's an extra incentive there for a speedy sign-up. Um, and that's it really. I mean, yeah, I mean, you know, if you're interested in the course, drop me a line or, or go go via Mark. But, you know, I'll say make sure you use that, that code FXMA10. That's what will get you the, the discount if you use that. And obviously, once I see you've paid, then obviously I'll pop a copy of the book in the post to you as well. So uh, that's the course there. And also on the home page, there's a, each month I do a free monthly podcast, goes out to all my institutional clients and all people on the, uh, the database as well. So we just pick a different theme each month and I talk about it for about 10 minutes, uh, often with a practical activity or exercise in there as well. So you can sign up for that free of charge. It's just a name and email. There's no marketing done through it other than my own um, courses. There's no external selling or anything on there. So it, um, if you fancy that, you can sign up there. I'm conscious of time. Uh, we've gone a bit, but I am going to pick up some. Oh, sorry. Yeah. So the webinars, this webinar is recorded, uh, but also the webinars on the eight week program are also all recorded. And then a link is sent out the following day. So you've got access to the recordings. And the recordings are available generally from, from session to session. So at the end of week one, between week one and week two, the recordings are available. I normally overlap them slightly, uh, but it is a case of you do the webinars. There's a, a three or four week period to kind of watch the one that's just been on, and then it kind of rolls through. So by the end of week eight, there'll be four weeks where you can still watch probably the last two copies of them. So there's plenty of time to work through. Uh, there's manuals, there's workbooks. And I say with the email support, it tends to work really well for people. So that, that's, that's the part that I think is the most valuable. You know, it's, it's a chance to actually um, ask your questions, uh, which also you can't do so much you know, if it's a book um, or just a DVD course. So um, that's that. Look, I want to get on to a few questions and answers. So um, you can find out more about the course there on the home page of the website. Let's have a look at some questions that have come in. And we'll take 10 or 15 minutes of questions. And I think then we probably knock it on the head for tonight so uh, let's have a look I struggle with my trading having a full-time job nine till six UK time what advice can you please give to overcome this aspect okay well this is um, quite a common question and it's a tricky one because um, from my own this is my own personal view I think you know you can certainly learn to trade 
doing it part time, but you have to be realistic in your expectations. A lot of the traders that I'm working with institutionally are trading, they'd be doing probably seven till seven, so 12 hours a day. They'll be doing that five days a week, so 60 hours a week. And they're getting access to, you know, consistent, pretty high level coaching, training, mentoring, the whole lot. Uh, and a lot of those still find trading very, very difficult. So if you're doing it on your own part time, can it be done? Yes, it, it can be done. It's possible. Is it harder? Yes. Does it take longer? Yes. So one of the key things also, you've got to adapt your trading to your situation. So if your situation is from nine to six, you're working, then you've got to be looking at, you might want to be a day trader and trade intraday and trade FX, whatever it might be, but that might not be what's most suitable. You might need to go to, maybe it's an end of day stocks type program or uh, it's a longer time frame, you know, swing style strategy where you can trade um, a little bit differently or go, go longer time frame, even, you know, go to, you know, weeks or even on the monthly basis. So you might have to adapt your strategy to the time you've got available. And I think that's something I see in some retail traders. They're trying to trade in ways that aren't conducive to their current lifestyle. Makes it very difficult, very frustrating. So look at your context you're in. Look at the situation you're in. Look at what time you've got available. Look at what your strengths are um, as a person and what you enjoy about trading. And then you're trying to get the best fit possible. That, that's the key, the best fit possible. Uh, what does the program cost? The program, online program is £495 minus £49.50 when you use that code. So um, give or take a bit, just under £450. And that's eight sessions, 90 minutes, plus all the goodies that come in with there as well, and the free book. Uh, how do you unlearn bad skills like taking profit too soon? Uh, okay, so basically, uh, it's not so much about unlearning a bad habit as you've got to build the new habit. So think about bridges in the brain. Uh, you've built your, your bridge for taking profits too early. And uh, let's say you've done that for quite a long time. So you've built quite a big bridge. It's quite elaborate and pretty strong. And now you want to build a new bridge for running your profits a bit further. So in the brain, at the point of you wanting to hold your profit for longer, the brain's looking for a bridge. And obviously the bridge which is the easiest bridge, and the brain likes easy, is the bridge that's already well built. So it'll go for the old bridge. What you have to do is you have to literally, and this is why attention and focus and energy are so important, is you've got to apply attention, energy, and focus into Still recognizing that, that urge to go to the old bridge, the tendency, and then literally steering it away and towards the new bridge. That's going to take effort, willpower. That requires energy and high focus and awareness. Again, it's why the intention part is so important. But each time you do that, you're basically starting to construct your new bridge. Over time and only through repetition and practice will you then start to build a bridge which then becomes strong enough and maybe elaborate enough that the brain actually maybe thinks 50-50 about which way to go, but over time goes to the new bridge. So it's not so much about we're unlearning the old one, that's still there, but we're learning the new way, we're building those new bridges. Now, on the program we'll talk about a process called neurobehavioral modeling. It's, a, it's, a, it's a, like a mental programming technique using visualization. And what we can do is we can use visualization processes to accelerate the speed of change to actually build those neural bridges as such. So, uh, so that's one thing we can, you can look at uh, as an accelerator. Okay, big problem here is getting back in the market after a couple of losing trades in a row. Okay, again, very common trading problem. Okay, have a couple of losers. And again, what's going on there? Think about this in terms of, you know, most traders, what's their experience like? Have a couple of losing trades. Uh, so, you know, maybe we start to doubt, get some doubt, you know, is it my day today? Or, um, you know, am I in tune with the market? We get a few strange feelings in the stomach, a bit of anxiety about getting back in. And one thing that's really important, actually, is at that time, to let yourself be aware of what you're thinking and feeling, to notice those thoughts and feelings, because they'll, they'll, be, they'll probably be normal. Okay, they'll probably be normal. Most people probably feel the same thing at, at, at different degrees of intensity, but probably feel roughly the same thing. And, and then it's just being in tune with that. You know, so it's kind of getting a sense of just, you know, what am I feeling? What am I thinking right now? 
uh, what are the urges I've got, so my urges to not get back involved, you know, and again, if you start to understand what's going on for you in that situation, why is that? Well, it's the brain being self-protective, it's trying to keep me out of trouble, again, um, but using a, you know, a, a, a very old ancient survival mechanism, uh, not one that's conduced, not one's been used or conducive to trading financial markets. And, and then there are a number of techniques we could use in our emotional management technique we went through earlier. Uh, we could look at what's going on in the mind and, and manage our thinking. But ultimately, it's one of those situations where you need to be aware of your situation. You need to regulate as best you can using the techniques you've got. But it's a bit like a parachute jump. Ultimately, to get back in the market, if it is a good opportunity, you will have to you know, apply a bit of effort and force. It won't feel natural or easy. Uh, at that time, uh, much as if you were trying to walk across maybe a high bar and you've fallen off twice and you've got to go a third time. Uh, even if you know you can do it the third time, it's going to feel a bit difficult, be some anxiety, some stresses, some thoughts, but you've just got to focus in as much as you can on the action you want to take. You've got to put everything into, so there's a, there's a, a psychological approach called um, acceptance psychology and commitment psychology, and that's all about, you know, being aware of our experience in the moment, but yet committing to the action we want to take. Um, so it won't be easy. And I think one of the things that people often expect is they're looking to get to a stage where this feels easy and that is easy. And, you know, I work with guys who are very experienced, very successful, who still find these things challenging. It, that is the psychology. But what we can do is learn to manage the psychology so we can take the effective action more of the time. And that, that's really the key thing. Um, but you know, after two losing trades in a row, one thing you can do, take a little bit of time out, sit down, write down on a bit of paper exactly what you're thinking and feeling, what the urges are, sit with it for a moment, see how you feel, and then think about you know, what is the action I want to be taking, what's my committed action. Uh, you said how to manage emotions in five steps. One, name the emotion. Two, take action. What are the rest of four and of three? Uh, managing emotions, first step I would go for is always awareness. Noticing what you're feeling. Second stage will be then the labeling of the emotion. Third step is accepting the emotion in that moment. So not trying to get rid of it, not suppressing it. Step four, now we are allowing the emotion to be there, we can understand it, get the data, and then step five, focus on action. So let's go back to the guy there with the two losing trades. So notice how we're feeling, anxious, stressed, maybe a bit fearful, name it. Okay, so right now I'm feeling anxious, I'm feeling stressed, I'm a bit worried about getting back in the market. Just let it be there for a moment, accept it. Accepting emotions allows the body to process them. If we don't process the emotions, they'll linger around. Yeah, so this is a danger of suppression. People suppress their emotions, they linger around, and later on they come back up with more power. We accept it, we can then process it. Step four, understand. So, okay, so why am I feeling this way? Well, I've had two losing trades. I'm a bit worried about you know, maybe having a third losing trade. So it starts to normalize it. You know, we, we see it as being a part of the experience. Step five, what's the effective action to take? If my chart set up or if I see my indicators, if they all set up, I'm going to take the trade. But then I've got to have that little bit of commitment. It's like my parachute jump. I'm at the door of the plane. The door is open. I'm anxious. I'm scared. I'm fearful. My brain's saying stay in the plane, and yet I commit to jumping out. And that's a bit what it's like sometimes in those situations. Uh, lack of discipline might be my biggest problem. I pretty much know what I should do, but I don't always do as it seems. Any tips on building discipline? Uh, well, that's the big question. That's the big question. Well, the first tip to building discipline is um, trying to get your trading strategy aligned to your personality and styles. It's easier to trade in a disciplined way if you're trading towards your natural styles and strengths. It's harder the further away from that you move. So that's one thing you can do. Secondly, uh, you have to make sure that you're, and this is um, a, a common challenge, is that we're not confusing lack of discipline with lack of skill and knowledge. So sometimes when traders have got a lower level of skill or lower level of, not, lower level of knowledge, um, they 
make mistakes, they get things wrong, and it, I guess discipline's where it comes down to. It's easy to kind of blame, but sometimes it's just lack of skill, knowledge, or experience. That's something else to look at. When it comes down to discipline itself, a lot of it is about, or one of the core challenges in trading is, in the short term, we feel bad. So, um, you know, we, we're running our profits, we get anxiety as maybe the, the market starts to retrace a little bit. And then to get rid of that anxiety, we get out of our position, and now we feel better. But then when the trade goes back in our favor again and goes up to our profit target, we feel worse. So a lot of trading is the discipline factors seem to revolve around this, this problem of we have short-term discomfort, we get rid of that by doing a certain behavior, that makes us feel better. So example, go back to the guy with our two losing trades. We've had two losing trades. We're there in that moment. We want to get into the market, but we're anxious if we get in that we might lose money. So to avoid feeling bad in that moment, we stay out of the trade. So in the moment, we're kind of better off. We're not losing. But then as that trade sets up, maybe becomes a winner, then we realize actually we wanted to get in. So now we feel bad in the long run. And a lot of trading behavior, a lot of discipline revolves around that, that kind of scenario where we get short-term discomfort. We get rid of that with the trading behavior. We feel better in the short term. We feel worse in the long term. Whereas what we've got to try and switch it around to is accepting short-term discomfort to get long-term gain. And the way of doing that is, is to move away from this psychology of, of trying to suppress thinking and suppress emotion, and actually to, to develop ways of getting more comfortable, of having an awareness and a comfort and acceptance of emotions and thinking in real time, not seeing them actually as even good or bad, but just as thoughts and just as emotions. And once you start to shift your mindset and become much more accepting of your moment-to-moment -moment experience, then actually you can, you can really make some big strides with your discipline. Uh, and this has been the big focus in, in the book I'm writing at the moment is it's all around using mindfulness-based techniques and, and acceptance-based techniques to manage um, our trading around emotions and thinking and our perceptions and our energy and our behavior so we've got more control. That ultimately comes down to training attention and training awareness, which is where we started off. A uh, new book is, is literally, will go to the publisher at the end of April, early May, and then it's in their hands. I would imagine it will be between July and September when the new book comes out, just for the guy who asked that question there. Okay. Look, I think we're pretty much an hour and a half in. There's, I've covered all the questions that have come in so far, from which I can see. Been some good questions, so thank you for the people who have... Um, ask those questions it's given us some good insights for other people as well thanks to all of you who have participated through the um, course of the webinar in terms of the polls because it's good to kind of get your views and uh, see what's involved in that that's just a little reminder there on the screens about the online program the code you can use to get your special discount and also get your free book um, it's a massive topic trading psychology thanks for tuning in and finding out a bit more I hope it's been useful I think there's a little poll that will come up at the end just to kind of get your feedback if you can take two minutes to do that that'll be great other than that you know all the best on the trading journey do keep in mind you know just simple things like you know keep focused on learning because lots of you have been newer traders keep focused on learning remember the law of impermanence everything is changing you're changing the markets are changing we've got to take things as they are in that moment do our best the brain is always trying to do the best it can for you at the time it's only in hindsight we tend to see it as being either good or bad um, you know, and keep working and improving your trading work on your skills work on your strategy work on your situation where you can but always remember also work on yourself so thanks again all the best there will be a recording the link will get sent out um, over the next day or two so you can listen to it again. And if you've got any questions following today's webinar or about the course, please do get in touch, steve at highperformanceglobal.com, and uh, I'll get back to you as soon as I can with an answer. All the best. Enjoy the rest of your day, evening, morning, or night, wherever you are in the world. And thanks again for tuning in.